I really don't think Ohm's Law math should be taught at the beginning of the class. In fact, I think if it's taught at all, it should be taught at the end of the class after teaching it in a completely different way that does not involve a calculator or using those uh, uh, resistance combination sheets that we all hand out where guys combine the resistors and combine all the parallel circuits and the series circuits and do all the calculations. I think those are important and I'm not going to suggest that you shouldn't do it. But I am going to suggest that you probably shouldn't do it at the very first day of class. I think that the worst thing we can do is confront an 18 or 19 year old kid with all of these worksheets and all of this math when they left high school hoping they would never have to take math again. I think what we do when we do this is we set them up for failure. So I strongly encourage you to teach Ohm's Law math, if at all, at the end of the class, once, once the student has had a chance to become acqu uh, acquainted with what volts, ohms, and amps really are, how our meter works, and what happens when we change these things. The second thing I'm concerned about is how we use E, I, and R to teach Ohm's Law. Well, frankly, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. It's been done because it's been done because it's been done because it's been done by the people who did it before us. But that doesn't mean we have to keep doing it. There are a couple of reasons why I think E, I, and R are a mistake. First of all, it's not what's on the meter. The meter has volts, ohms, and amps. The V, the omega, and the R. Well, when you're describing volts, ohms, and amps in the classroom, you're not saying E, I, and R, you're saying volts, ohms, and amps. So, using the V, the omega, and the R, the volts, ohms, and amps, only makes sense when you stop to consider that the reality is they're never going to see E, I, and R again. Those are variables that were created by other people for other purposes, for other equations, for other times, in other circumstances that we're never going to see. So this is not an indictment of the intelligence of your students, it's simply saying it doesn't make a lot of sense to try to teach a person to drive on a transmission that says D, R, and N by using the letters X, Y, and Z. Teach D, teach N, teach R, and when you're teaching Ohm's Law, use the V, the Omega, and the R, volts, ohms, and amps. It doesn't make any sense to cloud the issue with letters that they're never going to see again, because when you teach meter reading, that's what they're going to see, volts, ohms, and amps. So meter reading and Ohm's Law should use the same variables, and there's nothing on the planet that says you have to do it otherwise. You can certainly do this any way you want, but using the E, I, and the R, I believe, honestly in my opinion, makes the problem a lot harder than it needs to be. The third thing that I have a concern with is the way that we use the formula that's simplified. In other words, E, I, and R doesn't have a fraction in it. And some would say, well, that's better because it's less confusing, which of course is a lie because they're going to have to transpose the formula anyway to be able to understand how to do the math when they finally get down to trying to figure out all the equations that we give them to solve all the problems, to figure out what the ohms are, what the amps are, what the volts are by working the problem forwards and backwards. So they're going to have to be able to use a fraction anyway. So saying that it's a simplified equation doesn't really make a lot of sense. What makes more sense, in my opinion, is using the equation volts over ohms equals amps. And there's a very important reason for that. Volts and ohms make amps. The true relationship of Ohm's law is that voltage and resistance make amperage. If we change voltage, we change amperage. If we change resistance, we change amperage. That's the mechanical relationship. Mathematically, you can flip those numbers around and do anything you want, but mathematically, we're not out there trying to fix a truck. We're trying to fix a truck or a boat or an airplane or a piece of equipment by understanding what's happening to current flow. If current flow changes in a circuit, then the circuit's going to malfunction. And we need to understand what's happening to change that current flow. Is it an open? No flow. Is it a short to ground? Too much flow. Is it a high resistance fault? Not enough flow. Well, an open has infinite ohms, a short to ground has low ohms, and high resistance has high ohms. So Ohm's Law describes and explains the three faults that we have in wiring, and understanding Ohm's Law can make it easier for a person to understand what's actually happening and why it's broken. So I strongly advise against using the simplified formula to explain what Ohm's Law is. Because if you use the volts, the ohms, and the amps, and you use the formula volts over ohms equals amps, then now you're actually only teaching one concept. 
You're not teaching multiple concepts. You're teaching the same concept one time that has two or three or four applications depending upon how you take the class. So the formula E, I, and R is bad because of the E, I, and R, but it's also bad because it doesn't include the fraction volts over ohms, which describes what happens to amps. When we teach electricity for any reason to anyone at any time, the purpose for doing it has to be to teach them how to diagnose problems in systems. So when you teach Ohm's Law, the only reason you should be teaching it ever is because teaching it should make fixing things easier. This is a big problem because everything that we do is governed by Ohm's Law and Kirchhoff's Law. Everything. So being able to understand Ohm's Law actually is very, very important to being, being able to go out and fix things. This is why when I teach, I always teach meter reading and schematic reading first. I always want a person to be able to read a meter and to know what the meter is telling them, to know how to connect it into a circuit, to be able to discuss and describe what the meter is doing, why it's doing it, and what the reading means. Secondly, schematic reading is important because the whole purpose of this is to fix circuits. So if a person doesn't understand up front what a circuit is, then they're going to have a hard time understanding what it's doing. Why do we need to know Ohm's Law? Well, every change in a circuit Every fault in a circuit is a change in resistance. Opens, shorts to ground, and high resistance are all changes in resistance. They change the current, we measure volts, we try to determine the current flow, and then we use that information to try to figure out what fault we have, and then we work backwards and try to figure out where the problem is based upon what we know what we're looking for. We know we're looking for a broken wire, or we know we're looking for a shorted wire, or we know we're looking for a rusty wire, one of those three. So Ohm's Law is critical in that respect, the concept, but not the math. If you teach the math at all, and I'm not saying you shouldn't, but if you teach the math at all, the worst thing you can do is teach it in the first two or three weeks of class. You should really teach it in the last two or three days of class. It does a lot of things. It takes the pressure off the student, makes it more likely that it's going to make sense when they do it, and best of all, it gives you two or three weeks that you didn't have before to teach things that you'd rather be teaching than math. So Ohm's Law at the beginning of class, the math, makes no sense at all in my opinion. The FET shop book contains several pages on Ohm's Law, philosophy, principle, concept, math, resistor combinations. And the most important thing it does, I hope, is explain to a person who's in class why you have to understand it. It's very important to be able to use it in the class and to be able to use it in the shop to be able to fix things. So give us a call or email us if you're interested in the book. It's available at a significant discount to educators and to students. And we'll happy to provide them if it's something you think would be useful to you in your classroom.